Right now, I'm going to tell you the ultimate story. <clears throat> this story was told to me by my teacher, Rabbi Moshe Naparstak. Blessed memory. Here we go. And over here, here, here he is. Rabbi Moshe Naparstak, you can see it. A blessed memory. He passed away already like, what, four years ago? Right. Let's get it. Anyway, this is a picture of Rabbi Moshe Naparstak. And... Um, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> this is like the quintessential Jewish story, I think. Quintessential. Anyway. So the story is like this. <clears throat> there was a um, um, a Jew that lived in Hebron. Now Hebron was a, a religious Jewish community. This is before the state of Israel. This is 1929. <clears throat> and there was a Jewish settlement there. A lot of Chabadniks also were also there. Sloniums, and the, they were there in Hebron. And in fact, the, what is it? The, the, um, I think that Samach Tzedek is. He bought a big building. It was called Beit Romano. He bought, there's a big yeshiva over there now. <clears throat> he bought that yeshiva. So it's really a property of Chabad. <clears throat> So there was a Jewish community. Then they were very religious, and they got along very well with the Arabs. <clears throat> it was like the <clears throat> ideal setup of, you know, what they call du kiyum of, uh, of what there's a word for in English. Anyway, of, of living together. We can live, we can get along with the Arabs. Everything, until they killed everybody. You know, everything worked out fine. The Arabs. So, <clears throat> but there was one Jew there, and his name was Menashe, and he was a renegade. And he didn't want anything to do with Judaism. He didn't want anything to do with Judaism. He, re re he rebelled against the whole Jewish community. And all of his friends were Arabs. He hang ar hung around with the Arabs. And he didn't change his religion. He didn't have any religion. He just he hated religion in general. I mean, he's not going to tell the Arabs, you know, because he doesn't like them. But Judaism, for sure, he was against. And he would even ride his donkey or whatever, his motorcycle, into the Jewish community, into the Jewish sector, smoking a cigarette on Shabbos. And people would say, Menashe, why don't you please come back to Judaism? Okay? And he would say, I'm just a good Jew of you. I don't have to have all these commandments and all these things. Uh, so he's chumming around with the Arabs all the time. Okay, then there came, like I said, that the Arabs all of a sudden one day that uh, the Wazin, whatever, the guy who goes up on the turret. So he says, let's kill all the Jews. Tabach el Yud. So they, they, let's kill all the Jews. So everybody said, oh, that's a good idea. So they came from all around. The Arabs came around and they started killing Jews. They came, they, they had hatchets and there's even a special graveyard over there of the Jews that were killed. It's a, uh, 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 what did I do? One second. One minute. There we go. Okay, there's even a special graveyard over there for the Jews that were killed. There was like 70 of them, I don't know, of the Jews that were killed on the thing. And there were a lot of Jews that were maimed also, that their hands cut off. And they have a special museum over there. Anyway, so the Arabs, they killed the, all the Jews that were in the street. They were totally unsuspecting. And the British, of course, the soldiers, they just sort of stood back. And they killed Jews in the streets, and then they went into different buildings, and they killed Jews. And then they started going from house to house looking for Jews. And so they came into the house where Menashe was sitting with his friends, the Arab friends. And Menashe, he looked like an Arab. You know, he looked like an Arab. And he, um, you know, not totally, but he, he looked enough like an Arab to be an Arab. So they came in and they said, are there any Jews over here? So they said, no. And he caught their eye for some reason. And they said, what about him? Are you sure he's an Arab? And all the Arabs said, yeah, he's one of us. And they said, okay, I'm sorry. And they left. They left. So <clears throat> he stood up. And he ran outside after these murderers, and he said, no, I'm a Jew. I'm a Jew. I'm a Jew. And they killed him. And the people that he was sitting with, afterwards they said, <clears throat> we don't know why he did that. Why, why did he do such a crazy thing? I mean, we were protecting him. You know, we were protecting him. They claimed that they weren't part of the murderers, whatever. Anyway, we were protecting him. He would have been okay. Now, now you think, here's Menashe sitting with the Arabs. And he, he was on the winning side. 
it paid off for him. It paid off. He was against Judaism. He rejected Judaism. And it worked for him. Right? All the Jews, they were getting killed, massacred, chopped up, stabbed. And he was sitting safely with his friends because he chose the right identity. He was not a Jew. <clears throat> he won. All of a sudden, he stands up and he runs out and he says, I'm a Jew. Why? What happened? What? what? <clears throat> so the answer is, is that all the time he was priding himself that he's a Jew. It was very important to him. And he didn't realize how important it was that he was a Jew. So he would say, I don't have to keep Shabbos. I'm a Jew. I don't have to eat kosher. I'm a Jew. I don't have to act like a Jew or talk like a Jew to be a Jew. I don't have to do any of the commandments. I can do all the sins. I don't have to do all this Torah stuff in order to be a Jew. Oh, leave me alone. I'm a Jew. But all of a sudden, when it came down to that my only merit that's keeping me alive is that I'm not a Jew, that's too much. Somehow it's too much. It doesn't make any sense. He could have just kept quiet, you know, taken another drink or something like that, and just taken, you know, and just be quiet. And then afterwards, he could have, you know, realized, well, you know, to be an Arab is a bunch of, bunch of murderers. I'm not going to be like them. Do something logical. But it's not logical. Being a Jew is not logical. And the essence of being a Jew is even more not logical. That's the root of the Liba that we talked about in the, in the Mimer in the morning. And so, in a way, that's the essence of what Judaism is, that it makes no sense. And we know that it's good, infinitely, infinitely good. And even if it means giving your life, that's what how Judaism started with it. God telling Abraham, take your son, kill him. We're defying death. Death does not scare us. Death cannot move us from our true identity as Jews. And we're not talking about going to heaven. I'm sure that this Menashe guy, he wasn't thinking about going to heaven because he had, you know, his, his whole life was just one big sin. You know, he just didn't do anything, you know. So he wasn't thinking, I'm, I'm going to give my life and then I'm going to go to heaven. I'm sure that was not his calculation. In his whole life, he didn't think about heaven or hell at all. It wasn't, a, wasn't part of his worldview. What was part of his worldview? He didn't know until they said, you're not a Jew. All of a sudden... That was his worldview. I'm a Jew. That's my essence. Have a good day with Mashiach now. We'll meet tomorrow at 8.15.